The Senate just passed legislation that will help ease some of the burdens on commercial properties which were adversely affected by implementation of the 2012 Flood Insurance Reform Act. So we've kept some of the most important reforms under Bigot Waters, but we've created a window of opportunity to make sure we get to affordability, that we keep the real estate market uh, at a time in which it desperately needs help. Here to discuss the law with me is Austin Perez, our Senior Legislative Policy Representative for Environmental Issues. Thanks, here. Austin, I've been getting a lot of questions about how this law will affect current owners of commercial property. Now, from what I understand, there are two different kinds of commercial property owners, those who have grandfathered status and those who have non-grandfathered status, and that under the new law, the grandfathered status of properties is returned to them, which many lost under Bigger Waters implementation. So what happened was properties were built years ago outside of the floodplain. Um, they were in what's called an X zone. Since then, there have been flood map updates, and so they might have moved the property, a flood map might have moved a property from an X zone into the floodplain, into an A zone or a V zone. Mm -hmm. Under current law, those properties would lose their grandfathering under the, the outside flood zone status. Instead, they would have paid, um, they would have gone from the X zone rate table to the A or V zone rate table. So the X zone rate um, right now could be as little as a few hundred dollars a year compared with an A zone or V zone rate, which could go as high as $80,000 per year. So you're talking about a in big increase under current law if they lose their grandfathering. This bill would essentially say no, those property owners in the X zone who were originally built in the X zone would continue to retain the X zone rate. Great. And for those non-grandfathered properties, under the current law, we were seeing rate increases of 20 to 25 percent per year until they reach the actuarial rates. Under the new law, the, some of those rate increases go down, correct? That's correct. If you're a newer property, in other words, a property that was built after 1975 or if later the effective date of the first flood map for the, for the community, then that, that property would see an increase which is set according to FEMA's cost analysis which is done each year. Um, under current law, um, they see a maximum of 20% across the flood zone. So technically, technically speaking, you could see a property that sees more than a 20% average increase. They could see up to a 30% increase, as long as someone else in that flood zone sees a 0% increase. So what this bill would say is no more averages. We're going to put a cap on each property so that no newer property that was built to code would see more than an 18 percent increase. Not that they'll automatically see an 18 percent increase. The maximum they could see is an 18 percent increase for the reason being that they built the code. So why should they see an exorbitant increase as a result? Great. And what about the effects on people who purchase commercial properties? I understand that under the previous regime they were getting rates that were at the full actuarial rate for the flood insurance of that area even though when they purchased it, the rates were much, much lower. That, that's right. And these were the largest problems that we addressed. Mm -hmm. So a current owner of a commercial property would see up to a 25% increase, whereas the buyer of that property could see anywhere from $1,000 up to uh, uh, an $80,000 increase overnight at the closing table. What this law does is it eventually says no, we're not sure that that $80,000 rate increase is accurate, at least a lot of the rate quotes we've looked at don't stand up to any kind of scrutiny. We're not sure that that $80,000 is correct, and by the way, a property sale um, is complicated enough without introducing an inaccurate rate that could blow up that sale into the mix. So what this says is rather than seeing the full jump to $80,000 or whatever the rate is, which we're not sure is accurate, Instead, those commercial properties, when they're purchased, would see their rate increases just like any current owner. Okay, great. And there's a third facet of this new law that I've been getting questions on, and that's the policy assessment. Can you explain what that is and 
that's not just commercial properties that are paying into this, correct? That's right. So this assessment, um, which is put on all NFIP policies, is to make up the shortfall in the revenue. Since you're uh, rolling back some of the increases so that you're no longer seeing 80000 you're going back to a 25% increase over the previous year, there's some shortfall that needs to be made up. And so this law essentially says that instead of um, roughly today, half the property owners are paying 25% increases, the other half were paying the full increase all up front at the closing table. What this says is that no one will see above a 25% increase in a given year. And the difference will be made up by a small assessment on every policy um, f um, through the NFIP, and that policy would continue once a year, each year, until every property owner is paying the full cost of of flood insurance over time. So rather than front-loading all the costs, forcing the, the property buyers to see the full increase all at property sale, it will be spread out gradually over a number of years and paid for through an assessment that's spread across all policies in the NFIP.